Hello everyone, welcome to GGN. Today is Wednesday, July 25th, 2012, and I'm Darko. This is my website if you'd like to visit. It's ggnonline.com. And my YouTube channels are ddarko2012 and ddarko2013. You can check out this poll here. Do you think the mainstream media's anti-gun coverage prior to the signing of the UN Arms Trade Treaty is coincidental? So far, the majority of people, 93% of voters, are saying no, followed by 6% saying yes. And just a quick side note here before I begin, uh, if, you, if the audio isn't loud enough or the letters are too big or too small or you're having video or audio problems, just let me know in the comment board because I changed up uh, how I'm doing these videos a little bit. Hopefully, it'll be a little more uh, ergonomic for myself. And uh, so far, it seems to be better for me right now. So just let me know. Uh, the first article up, I'm going to be covering the Middle East here. So a lot of news uh, with Iran, Syria, and that urgent. West spread Syrian WMD lies for foreign intervention as NATO's proxy terrorists collapse in both Damascus and now the northern city of Aleppo. Israel and Turkey are preparing an impending attack. So hysterical propaganda is increasingly amplified since early Monday when the Syrian government's foreign minister insisted that if Syria had any unconventional weapons, they would be under strict security and only used against foreign aggression. He went on to clarify further his statement by insisting that his comments in no way implied Syria had such weapons. So the mainstream media basically ran with, these, uh, with this story, building on this. Reuters has reported Syria rebels Assad regime moved chemical weapons near border, citing habitually deceitful F. SA, that's Free Syrian Army Leaders, and little else. Israel and Turkey have been gearing up for strikes against Syria to save a faltering Free Syrian Army offensive that has begun in Damascus but has already been put down and is now faltering in Aleppo. However, a pretext for such strikes must be fabricated, and there have been stark warnings from analysts and international press from around the world of a possible false flag chemical weapons attack staged by NATO and its proxies to then be blamed on Syrian government, or the Syrian government, and give NATO, Israel, and the Gulf states the impetus they've sought for a wider military intervention. So keep on the lookout for uh, any type of false flag with Syria, chemical weapons, Hezbollah, and somehow... Uh, blaming it and tying it in with Iran. Syria says, here's when we'd use chemical weapons. This article is from July 21st, 2012. Syrian rebels forming squad to secure country's chemical weapons. Syrian rebels are forming a special unit to secure the country's chemical weapons, a rebel leader said in an interview published Saturday in Britain's Daily Telegraph. So one of the leaders said, we have a group just to deal with chemical weapons. They were already trained to secure sites. And I wonder who trained them. Was it maybe uh, Mossad? Was it MI6? Was it U.S. intelligence? And we'll cover this uh, in the rest of this video. Israel is fearing that they could end up in the hands of Lebanon's Iranian-backed Hezbollah movement or other Islamist, Islamist militant groups. And it would be kind of uh, ironic, wouldn't it, if it ended up in um, their own, I don't want to call them a terrorist organization, but uh, Israel is trying to actually deem them Hezbollah a terrorist organization, wouldn't it be ironic if it ended up these weapons in Hezbollah's hands and they were used to defend Syria uh, against invasion or Iran against invasion if Syria uh, falls when the whole time the Western powers have their own back terrorists that are trying to hunt for these weapons. Next up we have Israel tracks Syrian WMDs with satellites, UAVs, and aircraft. So let's see here. The Syrian rebels are forming a squad to secure the country's chemical weapons, and Israel is tracking the Syrian uh, weapons as well. So I wonder who they're getting help from. Gas mask in demand as Israel tracks Syrian chemical arms. So some good old propaganda here. So are they the foreign aggressor that uh, they were talking about? Syria's foreign minister? It goes on here. It says this is uh, for the country's wider preparations for a possible showdown over arc foe Iran's disputed nuclear program, which they are pushing uh, recently here in the news. The worry, of course, is that the Assad regime will destabilize and uh, the control will also destabilize. Uh, that's not the worry, that's the plan, that they stabilize and get regime change and they get a hold of those weapons. German intelligence is saying that Al-Qaeda is all over Syria. They estimate around 90 ter terrorist attacks that can be attributed to the organizations that are close to al-Qaeda or jihadist groups that were carried out in Syria between the end of December and the beginning of July, as reported uh, by the German, I guess that's a newspaper, German Daily. 
Meanwhile, these three major German newspapers and the mass market tabloid Bild have published reports attributing responsibility for the massacre. They're talking about the May 25th massacre in the Syrian town of Hula to, an to anti-government rebel forces or treating this as the most probable scenario. But it goes on and up here and it does say in response to the same question, the German government admitted that it had received several reports from the German foreign, foreign intelligence service about the massacre, but noted that its contents of this report remain classified by reason of national interests. In other words, the German government is not going to come out and tell the truth. In this propaganda war, Syrian media is warning of staged videos, rebels dressed as soldiers. And when you go down, you read the editor's note for Strat Risk. Recently, the mainstream media has been using unverified anonymous videos via YouTube to show what is going on in Syria. The BBC at one point had hired some Syrians to film the civil war going on. Honestly, unless you are in Syria, you have no idea what's going on there. Well, unless you are the NSA, CIA, NRA. NRO or other respective international agencies you have no idea which is why it's so difficult to post articles on Syria and moving on Turkish truck drivers accuse rebel fighters of looting so dozens of Turkish truck drivers have accused the free Syrian army rebels of having burned and looted their lorries as they captured a border post in Syria from government troops they say while the truck was not damaged its cargo had been ransacked he also said that he's been uh, exporting carpets via the Syrian border for seven years, but this time we nearly escaped with our lives. He said that the Syrian army, Free Syrian Army had done nothing to stop the looting. So as far as these Syrian rebels go, the United States and the intelligence community doesn't even know whom it's aiding. Despite the Obama administration's claims, the U.S. has very poor intelligence on exactly who it is supporting within the rebel militias in Syria, according to an anonymous U.S. official. The U.S. is justifying terrorism against Syria, says Russia. Russian foreign minister says Washington is justifying terrorism against the Syrian government by failing to condemn atrocities committed by the armed groups fighting against Damascus. He said it's an awful position. He can't find the words. This is directly justifying terrorism. He says the top Russian diplomat also criticized the U.S. ambassador to the U.N.'s Susan Rice for arguing last week that the violence in Damascus meant the U.N. Security Council had to agree on sanctions resolution against the Syrian government. In other words, to say it plain uh, Russian, this means that we, the United States, will continue to support such terrorist acts for as long as the UN Security Council has not done what we want. That's what Lavrov said. And so, yeah, that probably was, uh, those assassinations probably were an intelligence operation in order to stoke those sanctions and that, and uh, that UN Security Council and our friend Webster Tarpley says the U.S. opts for terrorism instead of war in Syria, so a lot of people have the consensus. U.S. President Barack Obama has opted for irregular tactics to overthrow the government in Syria instead of direct military intervention in the country. The Obama method is to try to avoid U.S. direct military attacks, at least in terms of large conventional forces, says Tarpley. He goes on and says Obama relies on drones, he relies on special forces, on irregular forces, and his irregular forces include Al-Qaeda, interestingly enough, and all kinds of terrorist groups around the world that have now been recruited into this U.S. strategy. Britain's ex-army commandos trained armed rebels in Syria, says the U.K. media. Britain's former Special Air Service, SAS, commandos are reportedly training armed opposition groups fighting against the government of Syrian President Bashar al-Assad. Yeah, the Daily Mail and Sunday Express have re revealed that the mercenaries have set up training camps in Iraq and on the Syrian border for the armed rebels. Said the British Army sources, speaking on condition of anonymity, has said that militants are receiving instructions in military tactics, weapons handling, and communication systems. I mean, how to handle chemical weapons? Groups of 50 militants at a time are being trained by two Mideast-based private security firms which employ former SAS personnel. More than 300 rebel forces have completed the commando training program in Britain has also placed more than 600 troops on standby over the unrest in the country. Next up we have Vladimir Putin saying Assad removal will lead to civil war in the country. He goes on and says that on Monday that Assad's ouster would be unconstitutional and a civil war will stretch on for who knows how long. I believe that the future of the country should be decided not on the basis of a military victory or defeat on one of the sides, but on the basis of negotiations and compromise. He also said the Syrian leadership, as well as the conflicting side, the so-called armed opposition, should organize a negotiating process to achieve a mutually acceptable compromise for the country's future.
So remember this headline, Assad removal will lead to civil war in Syria. Syrian civil war boosts Israeli-U.S. defense ties. Officials deny reports that Israel under pressure from D.C. to refrain from taking unilateral steps against Assad's chemical weapons. So this is about Israel wanting to strike Iran, but they can't do that until they take down uh, the government of Syria. So now they're just going to go after Syria. So U.S. repairs, so, you know, don't be surprised if you see something crazy during the Olympics where, you know, Israeli Olympians get attacked again on the anniversary and they blame it on, uh, you know, Iran or Hezbollah or Syria or something like that. It says here, U.S. prepares for direct intervention in Syria. It says here, as the Free Syrian Army proxies fail and psychological operations falter, U.S. prepares more direct and desperate approaches for long-sought regime change. As it becomes increasingly clear that last week's surge by the NATO-backed so-called Free Syrian Army terrorists was a failed psychological operation coordinated with meticulously timed assassinations the day of the U.N. Security Council vote designed to stampede the Syrian government out of power, the Free Syrian Army's foreign sponsors are preparing the public for a more direct intervention while desperately attempting to maintain the illusion of chaos and the imminent collapse of Syrian's government, which they are doing every single day. If you just go on the internet and look at Yahoo!, and what kind of direct intervention are they referring to? Well, the CIA, who has been unable, that's what they say, unable to establish a presence in Syria, says here that with no agents in Syria and only a handful stationed at key border posts, the CIA has been heavily dependent on its counterparts in Jordan and Turkey and other regional allies. In the recent battles, lo loyalist troops fought rebels in the capital of Damascus and the city of Aleppo yesterday as international concern grew over Syrians' threat to the use of chemical weapons. Of course, that's what a nice loaded little statement right there. But it does make sense because either way, uh, they're, they're not getting what they want with the UN Security Council uh, sanctions. They're not winning the battles or at least. But the Pentagon is going to go ahead and prepare anyways, setting up special teams. They're calling them the Crisis Asset Team. So major media sources or outlets are having to basically concede and report this. Uh, fighting in Syria indicates Bashar al-Assad's end isn't imminent just yet. Despite reports last week, uh, they suggested the rebel forces were on the verge of major triumphs. The last few days of fighting there shows that the long battle still looms. And moving to Israel here, they're pinning the bombing in Burgas on Hezbollah to get EU terror ruling. So it's aimed at supporting his government's determination to get the EU to declare Hezbollah a terrorist state. And look at this again, some more news with Hezbollah in Syria. This is coming via the Jerusalem Post. Hezbollah has shown no sign of abandoning Assad and Lebanese officials close to the group say it won't stand uh, idle if the battle worsens. Israel says they will have to strike if Syrian weapons are moving to Hezbollah, says top analyst. And Defense Minister Barak basically says that the military strike is being considered. So EU, so just like the UN Security Council in the West not getting their way, the European Union has rejected Israeli's request to blacklist Hezbollah. And for the first time ever, I'm going to split the Middle East news in half. Usually I try to cram it into one video, but we're going to do this in two videos. And when we come back in the second part, we're going to get into uh, the role with Turkey and uh, Kurdistan. Remember, it's hard really talking about a possible Kurdish, uh, Kurdistan or Kurdish state being propped up by the West. So all of this violence is spilling over just like it's being planned, as if it's being planned. It says here, Syria update, what the news isn't reporting. It goes on here, it says Turkish offensive against its own rebels in Iraq's rejection of latest Arab League statement before massive Al-Qaeda attacks. So it goes on here and it says that beginning last week, the headlines were overrun by a coordinated NATO-backed Free Syrian Army offensive and assassination bombing in Damascus, times so close to each other and the UN Security Council vote on sanctions, the vote was pushed back a day. The attacks dubbed Operation Damascus Volcano were clearly coordinated with the assassination bombing designed for a psychological impact. And when the Syrians reacted with resolve, they quickly collapsed. And something to take note of is dissent in the UN Security Council is not confined to only Russia and China. The mainstream media is quick to condemn the two nations, portraying them as the sole obstructions of resolving the conflict, but has gone largely unreported by the West that abstaining of Pakistan and South Africa revealing a wider opposition upon the Security Council than was portrayed. When this Arab League ultimatum was rejected by Syria and Iraq, Al-Qaeda promptly punished. When they killed 91 people on Iraq's deadliest day of the year, then on the second day, 145 more Iraqis were killed and 400 wounded. 
This is GGN. Thank you.